So when you place the label, it's made up of five parts mainly. You have the anchor point. You'll notice when you place a label, there's a little tiny circle that's attached to the end of the arrowhead. That's used for actually computing the information that you see in the label. So um, it's a very important point part of the label. Then you have the leader. Obviously, that's optional. But most people are probably going to want to see that. That's just the line connecting the text and the anchor point. And then you have the text, obviously. That's the, the label content, which is made up of the text and the text field and the graphics. And then you have the option to put a frame, and that's the shape that goes around the label. And then there's obviously the divider line if, if you need that. Okay, so all these are, you'll see some of these in the actual dialog box. You can see leader, frame, divider. That's what that's referring to there. So the next thing I want to talk about, and this is we're going to start getting into the weeds and how you actually edit and create these. Um, within the tool itself and on the ribbon, there's a civil label manager, and that allows you to create, edit, and manage the labels that are stored in the XML file. And it can be accessed from the ribbon under drawing production. And when you go over to the civil label, you see the little launcher button there. When you ac access that, it's going to change the dialogue a little bit. You can also access the civil labeler by pressing this button here. And then when you do that, it's going to change the look of the civil labeler tool. It's going to give you access to some of the, um, to open a different XML file or to, to create new folders and to save and copy and paste and do all that kind of stuff. And it's also going to give you access to the, um, the text favorites and the element templates, the dimension styles and the different targeting and the more of the customization settings um, to create your own labels. So the only way you can really edit them is you have to make sure you get into the, the civil file manager to start making edits to the actual label. OK, so talk a little bit about configuration variables before we get into um, actually creating or editing the labels. So there is a new configuration variable for this that's been created for 1010. It's just called civil underbar labeler underbar XML. And you just point that to wherever your, your civil labeler XML file lives. And then now let's talk about, you know, creating some custom ones, you know, like how is the text computed and where is it computed from? So the text is computed from, from text favorites, obviously. You know, and those text favorites are stored in the dimension styles element templates, imperial.dgn. So there's one here. This is a new one. It's called labeler text favorites dimension styles element template um, DGN. So that's going to be the one that you want to go to when you're actually creating the, the text favorites for the computing the text and everything. And I'll show you how you can do that. So where is it computed from again? You know, you launch the text favorite manager. He's got a bunch of them set up in here and they're categorized by cross section, plan and profile. And you can see they're all their names here and everyone's familiar with the, the computed text. It's just like with the other tool, nothing really different here. You can copy and paste and edit and do all your work here. And then what controls the symbology of the label? The, uh, the element template controls the symbology so you can see here he's got all these set up on this dreaded orange color and then the dimension style for the arrowheads you can have no arrowhead or have an arrowhead and that's controlled by the dimension style and then the element template um, how's that the size of the, the arrowhead and the type defined and that again comes from the arrowhead and the dimension style so you have to dig into this dimension style that, that's specified here and then you also have to dig into the text style that's associated as well. It's kind of a combination of, of both there. So if you take a look at you know, this particular one here, it's using plan annotation with arrowhead as the dimension style. So here's the terminator, determines the type of arrowhead. Here's the height and the width. But this also um, works in conjunction with, with the style and the text height and the width over here. So that's what controls the, uh, the size of the arrowhead. So let's just jump into the software and I'm going to show you how this works in real time. So if I ever want to create a custom label, right, and I've created some, like I've made this one here. This one's called Intersecting Geometry Three Elements. He has one for doing two elements, so I made one for doing three because over on my other sheet here, I actually have three that come in. So I got this ramp. Ramp C comes into London Road, 
And I also have Ram D that comes into London Road. So I would actually need three stations there, right? I need the station for London Road, station for Ram C, and station for Ram D. So this is a custom one I made. I'm going to go ahead and place that. Identify first intersecting element. Identify second. Identify third. Come and place that one. Okay, so we can do stuff like that. Multiple targets, right? Now to edit the labels, like I said, we have to get into the civil labeler manager mode to, to make some edits, right? So to change this label, I could just go over to civil label manager. Notice the dialogue changes for me. I have some access to other things here. So I go over to label tool and you can see how the targets were set up for this particular label. You can also see the, the text favorite that it's using, the element template that it's using, the dimension style and the text style. So this is where you this is where you want to take a look at or this is where you want to go when you start wanting to create your own custom labels for various things. So for me, when I wanted to customize this, the first place I wanted to go was I wanted to go check out the text favorites to see if there was one that I could use that did a similar thing. So if you press on the little A button here, this will take you over to the text favorite manager. And you go into the uh, DGN library for the labels. So I'm just going to expand the list here. And these are the ones that Dan has made. You can see these are all the default ones. And then what I did is I found the one that was similar to what I wanted, which was the uh, the intersecting geometry that he had set up. I think it was this one here. So he had this one set up. You know, I just added another line to it. And then I copied it. Actually, I copied it from here. So you need to copy it from here and put it up in here if you're not working in the actual DGN lib. And so the one I made kind of looks like this. All right. So very easy to uh, to use if you're familiar with the, the text favorites and whatnot. So to copy it, you know, just do a copy and paste up here and you can just rename it and then put in whatever you want, right? So once the text favorite's been defined for what you're actually wanting to compute, right, then you return back to the uh, civil labeler manager and set the rest of the information, right? So then down here is where you could see the different targets, right? So this label, we have three targets. We have this one this one and this one and you have to pay attention to this when you're setting it up it shows six targets but technically you're only picking three things that are using um, computing information from three elements so so you could see here these prompts these can all be customized so instead of saying identify I could make that say select first intersecting alignment or you can say you know whatever you want to call it these are all customizable and then here are the prompts you know you can have it so that it doesn't prompt you every single time if you're computing two different things so like this one here has point annotation station and name you know if, if you're pulling that off from the same piece of geometry you don't need to uh, prompt prompt two times you can just say select it once and it'll pick those two pieces of annotation from that one element so there's really just one two three targets here even though it says six so it's kind of confusing but that's just the way it's set up right so that's how the, the targeting works then if you come over here to, to the placement of a label this is where you can define you know the method and then where the leader is going to be placed on which side of the text. This is where you would define the frame, you know, how, what type of frame you want to put around it, a rectangle, circle, ellipse, whatever you want. And this is where you de define the divider. Again, the view rotation, there's a whole bunch of options for this. I've mainly just been using the, the view horizontal. I think that's the one that would probably be used most um, just for placing general labels like that. And then once you uh, have that all set, you just have to go over here to say save and, and you're good to go. So There's not, not really too much to it as far as the creation of the labels. And Dan has so many in here to use as examples and you can just add things to. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.